I want to speak about how the mob was using bribery in the past. They would seek out corrupt cops or officials in order to get what they wanted, or more importantly, learn confidential information. Years ago, corruption was much more common within law enforcement agencies, and obviously it still exists today. But back then, it took place on a much higher level. Beginning in the late 70s, up until 1982, the Brooklyn Strike Force, working together with the Internal Revenue Service, began investigating the Colombo family and their involvement with bribing government officials for favors ranging from confidential tax information to ultimately helping Carmine Persico get released from prison. At this time, Persico was on the tail end of a 14-year sentence, and the case dated back to 1959, which involved hijackings. Throughout the years, Persico had five separate trials for these charges beginning in 1960, and was finally sentenced on January 27, 1972. At that time, the Colombo family was being led by acting boss Tommy DeBella. But Persico was viewed on the street as the family's next boss and would assume the position following his scheduled release in 1979. Andrew Andy Mush Russo, who was a Colombo captain, as well as Persico's cousin, went to an associate of his, a Long Island restaurant owner by the name of Victor Puglisi, and spoke to him about getting Persico out of prison sooner. Puglisi told him that he knew a corrupt IRS agent named Richard Anachirico, who might be able to help. Unbeknownst to Puglisi, Anna Chirico was conducting a sting operation aimed at getting mobsters on bribery charges. So in his undercover role, Anna Chirico recorded over 50 conversations with Colombo members and associates who requested favors for themselves and others in exchange for cash. And this took place over the course of three years. Whenever Puglisi spoke with the agent, he never referred to Russo by his name, but instead called him the Fat Man or Mr. X. And strangely enough, Puglisi had no problem mentioning Persico's name. In August 1977, Puglisi met with the agent and explained that he wanted to arrange for Persico, who was in Atlanta Federal Penitentiary, to be temporarily transferred to the MCC in Manhattan so Persico could get visits while he was in New York. Following that conversation, money was passed from Russo to Hugh McIntosh, who was a high-level Colombo associate and considered to be Persico's right-hand man. McIntosh gave the money to Puglisi, who then met with the agent at Junior's Restaurant in Brooklyn. And at Chirico X Puglisi, while in the men's bathroom of Junior's, you got the money for Carmine coming in? Puglisi told him that he did and gave him $3,400 and then told him that he kept $1,600 for himself. On yet another occasion, Persico was transferred back to the MCC in December 1977 in order to be close to New York during the Christmas season and naturally making it more convenient for Persico's family to visit with him. On yet another visit to the MCC, what I found extremely surprising is that in January 1978, Anna Chirico came up with an excuse to keep Persico in New York for an extra month by indicating that he might have information about the killing of Vincent Papa, who was killed in the yard of Atlanta Penitentiary on July 26, 1977. Papa was a narcotics dealer who was involved in the French Connection drugs that was stolen from the police department's property clerk's office. Supposedly, it became known that Papa offered to give prosecutors information in exchange for a lesser sentence. And Persico did meet with a prosecutor, but denied knowing anything but gossip regarding Papa's death. During a January 14, 1980 recording, Puglisi told Anna Chirico that his associates wanted to see if he could have tapes the government were using as evidence in an extortion case against Carmine Persico's brother, Alphonse, who everyone called Alley Boy. The tapes was from an FBI informant named Joseph Canalupo who was also a witness in the case. In March 1976, Alphonse Persico lent 10000 to Canalupo, who was considered a Colombo associate, although three years earlier, he became an FBI informant. By the time Persico lent him the money, Canalupo owed several people and more likely was borrowing from Peter to pay Paul and began missing VIG payments on Persico's loan. For those unfamiliar, the VIG is what you pay weekly until the principal's paid in full. 
On April 22, 1977, Canalupo walked into the Diplomat Social Club on the corner of 3rd Avenue and Carroll Street in the Carroll Garden section of Brooklyn. And according to him, I went to shake hands with Alley Boy. He got up, grabbed me by the collar, and started punching me in the face and said that while he was hitting me, that he wanted all his money back. Puglisi told Anna Chirico that he would get his money when Alley Boy went to court and there were no tapes produced as evidence. He also wanted to know if Anna Chirico could find out Canalupo's location. Ultimately, the tapes were placed into evidence and played at Persico's trial, in which a jury convicted him in May 1980. He would be released on bail while awaiting sentencing. However, Persico never appeared in court to be sentenced in August of 1980 and was deemed a fugitive. He was eventually arrested on November 9, 1987 in West Hartford, Connecticut. Puglisi would hand over thousands of dollars to the agent to fix tax investigations involving Andrew Russo, fellow Colombo Captain Charlie Moose Panarella, Colombo member Dominic Cataldo, and Gambino Captain Anthony Scotto. Anna Chirico did squash the tax investigations for Russo, Panarella, and Cataldo, as well as a probe of a tax return of Scotto. Apparently, Persico personally spoke with Anna Chirico about his release and said to him, We'll love you for this if you could make it good. You'll see. If you be honest with us, we'll be honest with you 100%, where we don't have to hide anything. On February 2nd, 1978, Anna Chirico told Persico that he was making progress getting him paroled. When money was discussed, Persico told him, We're never going to argue over money. The month before, Anna Chirico met with Puglisi again at Junior's, and Puglisi showed him a bag with 100000 in it, money that was going to be a down payment and that Puglisi would hold in his house in the meantime. If Persico was released, Anna Chirico would receive 250000 in total. Hugh McIntosh also met with Anna Chirico and assured him that he would be rewarded even if he failed to get Persico released, as he put it, because that's the type of man Persico was, and added, you got a gift even if nothing works out. He then asked Anna Chirico if he doubted he would be paid. The agent said he believed he would. McIntosh then told him, let me tell you something. Fellas like us, the only thing we got in this life is our word. Believe me, it's the only thing we got in this life. When I give you my word, I'll die for it. Despite all of the above, Persico was never released early and received parole when he was scheduled. But no sooner was he out did he learn that Anna Chirico was an undercover agent. Please remember to like this video if you haven't already. And for anyone who wants to show their appreciation or help keep this podcast going, you can do so by the Super Thanks icon down below or the PayPal Cash App links in the video's description. The investigation ended with everyone involved being indicted for bribery, including Puglisi, who disappeared shortly after, and obviously who they held responsible. But over and above that, he was pocketing some of the bribery money, and that bag with the 100000 was never discovered, and neither was Puglisi. Russo and McIntosh went on a lam for a while, but Russo surrendered in November 1981, and McIntosh did the same in July 1982. And by that same year, all the defendants pled guilty and received sentences up to five years.